Welcome to another edition of Believe in Saints. I'm your host, David Grubb, along with the legend, Terrence Copper. Sir, we still in a little bit of recovery from the Atlanta Falcons, but we got to look <laughs> ahead to those Tampa Bay Buccaneers this week. But before we do, man, we got to look back at some of the, the numbers that in mm-hmm. hindsight have come out of this Saints-Falcons game, and they're just amazing. It's still hard to believe um, that there's – I mean, the, the biggest thing for me that came out of last week, I, and I want to get your thoughts on this, it seems like the league still has the Saints down in the 16, 17, 18s, where you see the power rankings. Like, they feel like either this win was a fluke or this team is a fluke. And I'm surprised at that based on what you saw from the rest of the NFC. I'm definitely surprised at that. Uh, I think the Saints should be probably up in the top six when it comes to power rankings, honestly. Uh, they got a tough schedule ahead of themselves. They just pulled out a big win versus the Falcons. I'm telling you, the Falcons are a lot better than what people think they are. I know what I what I thought they were anyway. Uh, so, and then you got the Bucks coming up next. We already know how good they are. So, I just don't see how they're that far down. But at the end of the day, we just gotta go out there and prove it. There are some incredible numbers that came out of this. James with James Winston in the fourth quarter against the mm-hmm. Falcons, 213 yards. Two touchdowns just in the fourth quarter. He had more yards in the fourth quarter than 12 other starters did for their entire games last week. Like that, that six 20 yard play, uh, plays of 20 yards or more for the Saints, that's the most in the franchise since 1994. Ties the most for any a quarter, any game. They did it in one quarter. And then on top of that, you have the biggest comeback in franchise history on the road. They had never been down that many. The biggest previous to that had been 13 at Tampa back in the day. So, I mean, this that win was just – people don't have don't really understand how hard it is to come back from 16 points in the fourth quarter and then to do it the way the Saints did it. Again, you know you've been down like that before. How hard is it in that situation to come back and rally and put together three scoring drives? It doesn't happen often. That's how hard it is. It doesn't happen often, uh, but what it does, it just builds the confidence of the team and not just the team, but but Jameis by himself, period, because at the end of the day, he played so well late in the game. I could see if it happened early in the first quarter, he was playing well, and he started kind of doing it off as the game went on. But the fact he's just getting stronger as the game goes on kind of lets you kind of lets you know that, OK, he just needed to get back in his rhythm. From training camps, now the season started, he needed a half and a, a half and a quarter to get, to get, to get it rolling. And now fourth quarter, he's on the scene. He's ready to play. So hopefully that just can't, just, just transfer right over to the game this week right here. A lot of players on the injured, uh, injury report, the first one of the week. Um, but the only player who missed practice yesterday was Paulson Adebo, who also missed uh, the first game of the season. Um, we know we're going to see players on the injury report as we go in. But as long as guys aren't missing practice, especially this part of the season, like we said, these first three division games, I think that you, you still have to feel good knowing that you haven't added any new people to that part, the non-participant list. Oh, yeah, definitely. The injury report is always going to be the injury report. Uh, each team in the NFL has to turn in an injury report of anybody that's hurt. So it could be just a sore back, you know, an injury report. You know, so I don't really pay a lot of attention to the injury report, especially not right now uh, until things start getting a little more serious. But that injury report, especially early in the week, everybody's going to be up there. Um, I think we saw, you know, we saw Alvin Kamara leave the game early last week, but he's fine. He was participating in practice. I think that's important. We saw, um, you know, you talked about those blitz pickups early in the game, but Mark Ingram did have some big one in the in the in the fourth quarter. Um, mm-hmm. That depth again with the big thing that we talked about before the season started, it'll get tested again this week when you play against a team like Tampa and you're still early in the season trying to find your way. Uh, definitely, it definitely will, and defensively we have to be ready to roll rotating guys in and out because we understand how good this team can be especially with with Tom Brady at the helm so uh, we got our work cut out for us and we got to be willing to take it the same distance that we did against Atlanta we got to be willing to take it there because it may happen these games these divisional games are so crucial right now that every play matters Uh, because if if you go up what 3-0 in the division you can almost, if you just keep it rolling, you can almost kind of write your ticket to be to win that division. But you also don't want to go down one and two in the division as well. So 
that's a bad way to start off. So we got to come out rolling. We got to come out the way we left off in the Atlanta game. This team is so familiar to the Saints. They've had a lot of regular season success against the Buccaneers, particularly since Tom Brady came in. Um, I think it's interesting. The two parts of the Bucs line that were damaged during the offseason, the center and the guard position, normally you'd say we could overcome that because typically your tackles are your most important linemen. But against Tom Brady in particular, pressure up the middle is where the Bucs struggle. So the Saints, that's where they've been very successful to have backups at that center and guard position now because those protection calls are so important for Tom Brady. How big mm-hmm. is it when it's for the Saints – to know that they're going up against those backups and to be able to put some pressure. We saw Dallas, you know, make it uncomfortable for Tom Brady at times. Uh, just like you're saying, the same way you're picking that up, uh, the coaches has already picked it up and, and they're going to try to exploit everything when it comes to just one-on-one matchups, kind of get Mitch matches on guys. Uh, they may give them some TNT, some uh, tackle nose twists just to see if they're on their toes uh, to understand how to switch off. They're definitely going to test those guys, those backup. Um, and I really think that may be the Achilles heel because you hit it right on the head. Tom Brady has to have protection. He do not like uh, a lot of noise in his face, especially right up the middle. So uh, I think we got our work cut out for us, but it's, it's something we can take control of. How much of an advantage is it to have? And we saw how close to Ron Matthew and Marcus May came to making interceptions last week. They did get a fumble recovery as a tandem. You know, uh, the Honey Badger gets the credit for the play, but they were both right there. Um, to have the opportunity to have those playmakers back there against Tom Brady, where turnovers are so important because he's going to do everything he can to not turn the ball over. He understands how valuable a punt is at this stage in his career. He's going to do everything that he can to not give you extra possessions but to have playmakers on that back end who could do that for you because of the cover uh, capabilities you have on the outside with the Saints, I think that's a big advantage that the Saints have not maybe had in years past. I I agree with you. But the biggest thing our our defensive back has to do, they have to watch film. Film, film, film. Because Tom Brady is not your average quarterback. He's not going to make that regular throw that you think he's going to make because he goes through his progressions. And and he's smart. He already knows what you're going to do before you do it from him watching film on you. So the same way that Tom Brady watched film on all his opponents, we got to watch the same type of film when it comes to him and understanding and dissecting his the things that he do well and the things that he doesn't do well because he's going to watch film on us and he's going to be really trying to kind of pick us apart. Does that responsibility then fall a lot on Demario Davis because he's the captain of that defense. He's the guy who's going to be making the reads and the adjustments when they're out on the field. He's played this chess match with Tom Brady for three years now, Um, you know, disguising coverages and making sure that they don't reveal themselves till as late as possible. That discipline, it's again, because they've been through this with Dennis Allen for these last few years. I think that that's another good thing for the Saints and something that they can try to exploit against Tampa that is using a new center and a new guard. Yeah, definitely. And and one thing Coach Allen's going to do, he's going to throw a lot of different looks at him. Uh, you cannot just sit back in one look and expect to beat Brady. You got to throw different looks at him, multiple looks at him, different type of blitz. Maybe blitz some linebackers, maybe blitz some guys from the secondary to kind of get there quicker. So it's just we're going to throw a lot of different things at him. Uh, but, of course, we have our base package. And Coach Allen, like I said, he's, done, he's Tom Brady's nemesis. Uh, it's tough for Tom Brady to beat him. So uh, I, I think we got our hands cut out, like I said earlier, but we we can get the job done. You know, how important is it for the players, especially guys who, who are new to this system and those guys who come in, the rest of this locker room, they have to feel like, well, we went down there with Coach Allen to Tampa. We went with him, shut out the Bucks. They know him. They're confident in him. So how much does that carry over knowing that you've had past success? And even if you have a new coach, knowing that he's had success, does that confidence help during the course of the week? Definitely. It just helps you trust the process even more. It helps you understand that, that what he's telling you is going to work. We just got to buy into it. There is no guessing because, you know, you play sometimes you play with coaches, whether it's in the NFL or college that you just or high school that you just like, man, this guy I don't know what he's talking about. You know, he's not one of those guys. You know, he's a guy now, like I said, his teammates and his players understand that he knows what he's talking about. We just got to buy into it and do exactly what he's saying and use our talents. And, and that goes a long ways when your players trust the process. And by trusting the process, they trust in the coach. 
you go to the defensive side of the ball and you know Tampa wants to be aggressive, that they want to bring a lot of pressure, um, that presents opportunities for one-on-one chances for Jameis and Mike Thomas and Jarvis Landry and Chris Olave. And we saw just how they were able to win those matchups last week, particularly Jarvis Landry, I think was the highest rated receiver in the NFL after week one. Um, that's the saints have to be excited about that too, to have these one-on-one chances knowing that they're going to get this pressure from the bucks. Uh, definitely. They should be, but it's going to come down to Jameis. He has to understand that they're going to throw a lot of different things at him as well to try to confuse him. Uh, he's still a guy that has thrown over 30 interceptions It's regardless if he's over that hump or not, it's still part of his resume and teams are still going to try to exploit and always going to test him to see if he's gotten over that yet. So he's going to get a lot of different looks thrown at him as well. And he has to watch a ton, a ton of them also, but like I said, players, the receivers will have a ton of opportunity to make plays down the field, uh, especially with one-on-one matchups. This seems like a game where the screen game could be valuable as well. Um, with that pressure coming, Al Kamara didn't get a ton of touches and he left the game early last week. But he and Mark Ingram, they understand this this team. They understand these packages and they've had good success against the Bucs themselves individually. So uh, this is a, certainly an opportunity for the running game to get on track because you want to make sure that you shorten this game again for Jameis and, and do this at home. You have that advantage. But it, I think it's a really important for the Saints early on. Last week it was trying to establish the pass a bit. I think it's going to be really important early on for the Saints to be physically dominant and try to get the running game going, even though the Bucs are like the Saints in that they've been top five, top ten in rush defense the last few years. Trust me, after that game, we just played against Atlanta. Even though I felt like the Atlanta team kind of bullied us defensively early in the game, and a little bit happened on the same on the other side of the ball as well. Their defense kind of bullied our offensive line, getting to our quarterback a few times. Trust me, the coaches have established that we have to be physical. Uh, and they're going to try to set that tone because they didn't set the tone the first game they came out early in the game. So they're going to set the tone to be physical off the bat. And setting the tone means that they're going to run this ball early in the game. Of course, we're going to do what we do, but they're going to try to set the tone with running the ball. The atmosphere in the Superdome is going to be crazy, you know, for a lot of reasons. Um, now it feels more like this is a regular off season, a regular season. Again, we've, we've kind of gotten all those kinks out last year, again, missed the first regular season game because you had to play it in Jacksonville as a fake home game. So now it gets to be normal, right. a regular season opener. And it's against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and it's for Dennis Allen in his first home game. And it's a lot of these guys, you get to Jarvis Landry coming home to Ron Matthew coming home, all these things that'll be built up. What is that atmosphere like in the Superdome for that first regular season matchup? Uh, it's going to be loud. It's going to be loud. You probably trust me. They're, they're, they're in practice right now with a loudspeaker on, working on running plays with a ton of crowd noise. Uh, that is something that we do when we go into hostile situations, and it's going to be hostile in the Superdome. So trust me, in practice, they have loudspeakers on, playing as loud as possible, trying to get you to communicate with each other without actually communicating with each other sometimes. You know, uh, that's whether that's hand signals, whether that's head nods, um, or whether that's uh, on s- solid snap counts. So trust me, we're going to be ready for the atmosphere. But Tampa, they I don't know if they're used to it because it's definitely going to be loud. Those emotions, too, as a, as a home player, how do you get past that adrenaline again? Because last week was such an emotional game. Now you come back and again, the fans will be behind you in a completely, you know, different way. And though they do travel to Atlanta, it's still, this is different. How do you bottle up those emotions and use them in the right way and not let them get ahead of you and, and spur you in the wrong way? Uh, that's exactly what you said. Let the fans have the emotions. We have to, of course, we got to be emotional when we are actually in the, out there playing the back, playing the game, but you can you can never get too high. You can never get too low. You got to stay even keel. That way that you can concentrate. You can stay focused on what you have to focus on. Because I remember my first year when I played for Kansas City, we ended up going to the playoffs in Kansas City. And after we just had a tough season, but we ended up making the playoffs. And that first playoff snap, I was so hyped, so much adrenaline going. I run down the field on kickoff. I almost passed out afterwards because I was so – that's how hype I was. But right after that play, we had to calm down, get back focused, because if you're too hyped, you definitely can get out of pocket. And, and that's when mistakes start to happen. 
when you look at this matchup, are there any particular um, individual uh, matchups or places that you're going to be watching this week compared to last week and looking for? You said that the biggest growth in the season happens between weeks one and weeks two. Is it the line play that you're going to be focused on on both sides of the ball? Where are you really paying attention to this game? I want to focus on definitely uh, the blitz pickup because we struggled with that early in the game last week. Uh, I'm, I'm going to focus on the blitz pickup. Also, I'm also going to focus on Davis and and Brady because those guys, Davis got to be able to make certain certain adjustments as Brady's making them because he's going to make a ton of adjustments. So it's really going to be a cat and mouse game uh, that he's going to have to play uh, with Brady. But those are the matches I want to see. I want to see the blitz pick up. And I also want to see how, how Davis make adjustments to when Brady's making adjustments. I think we want to see Pete Werner again, uh, that consistency out of him, because now I think the baseline is set that he's going to be at least a very solid other linebacker in this mm-hmm. in this um, lineup. I think he has potential to be bigger than that. And then in a game like this, because of his ability to tackle immediately, and I think that was so important um, for the Saints, is just getting people on a down. You can't allow, because Brady's not going to try to big, get big chunk yards. For the Bucks, it's that yards after the catch, which is going to be so huge for the Saints. And Pete Werner is exceptional at getting people down as soon as he puts his hands on them. And look, we're talking a lot about Tom Brady. We got to worry about Leonard Fournette. True, he had, he had he had over 100 yards rushing last week, you know. So, and he's a load to bring down. So we're we're talking about Tom Brady, but on the flip side, they're going to be trying to do the exact same thing. The Saints probably going to try to do establish the run because they established it last week and it worked for them. And it, it took Tom Brady out of a lot of different situations that he may have been in if they couldn't establish the run game. So uh, they're going to do the exact same thing. So we got to be ready for Leonard Fournette as well. If if you're looking at this game, again, you talk about the double positive, saying the double negatives of it being a division game in week two, the chance to go up 2-0 in the division, the chance to get started 1-0 at home those and get these wins. The Saints have such a great opportunity at this early part of the season to separate themselves, not only in the division, but in the NFC. Um, you know, what, what What do you think about the Saints' opportunity? And you look around this the, after we saw week one in the NFL, you talked about them being a top six team overall, but just their place in the NFC, what did you see as far as their relation to the other teams there at the top? Uh, they're, they're definitely right there with them. And, and you hate to say it earlier in the season, and I'm not going to say it, but you, you don't like even putting up saying that this is a must-win game and because it, it's not a must-win game. But if we can get this game, like I said, it just takes us so much farther going 2-0 in the division, like you said, like you stated earlier, uh, and then having another division game the next week and being able to go 3-0 versus a Carolina Panther team that, to me, doesn't scare me at all, doesn't scare me either. So it could be really then Carolina could be 0 2 legitimately. I mean, they have a tough yes. game this weekend. Yes. So if we can take care of this game right here, this would be huge when it goes to move forward. Huge. If you had to make a prediction, we do this each week. Now, if you know you pick picking a score, you were right there. You called this a one position game last week, and it went down to that. Um, you know, I would think that this game is again a, a, a very close game between two teams that know each other well. I'm thinking it's somewhere around 19 to 17, 19 to 16 Saints. Man, that was close. Like I'm saying 21, 17 Saints. <laughs> <laughs> One of those games. <laughs> it just feels like it. Like it's yep. gonna come down. And I think that the, the execution, you know, that's certainly gonna be a big part of it. And it, it's those those little things that hurt the Saints in the first half against Atlanta. You want to see them not do those things for four quarters against Tampa Bay. Right. Exactly. Uh so. Yeah, it's going to be one of those games, man. We're going to have to put everything together. we got to play four quarters, and all three phases got to be playing. All three phases. It can't just be offensive, defense, or spec. All three phases got to be on one accord to come away with this victory. I think this is a, a great gauge game for the Saints early on, too, because of where Tampa is seen by the rest of the league. Um, I think this, it, you know, and, and like you said, there's a long way to go. There's 15 more games after this one. But mm-hmm. I think it changes – if the Saints win this game, I think it changes a lot of the national story, depending especially on how they win it. Um, but for Jameis and the team, I think it adds legitimacy because that's what, what the national folks are looking for. Do you have a real win? They don't view the Falcons as one, like you said, even though the Falcons have looked better than anybody had to, we, we gave them credit for. And I think right. that was just because the Saints were misplaying early. I think the Falcons played well. 
Mm -hmm. Um, But I I think this is a legitimacy game, even though that doesn't matter in the locker room. It certainly matters to the fan base. Yeah, definitely. And and also it matters to some of the locker room as, as well. You know, we want to go out there and prove a point each week that we are the best team in the division. First of all, before we even get to the conference, we want to prove that we're the best team in our division. And this goes a long ways of showing that. And then one of your goals is to win the division. So trust me, they're they're really they're excited about playing this game and they're focused on this game because they know where, where it could head at, where where the steps it could take them to. So uh, like I said, they're focused on it just like the fans are. Tell folks how they can keep up with you. And, um, you know, I know you'll be locked in front of this one uh, at kickoff. And we'll certainly try to get back with folks as soon as we can um, to die, to break down this game against Tampa um, when we can. But tell the folks how they can keep up with you and the other work that you do, my brother. Man, so if you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram, uh, my sports academy is called the Premier Sports Academy. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter as well at T Copper uh, or Instagram at Terrence Copper as well. So all the, all the social media platforms, that's where I'm at. And also my, my uh, sports academy is up there as well, the Premier Sports Academy. And y'all can check me out at DM Grub on Instagram and Twitter. Follow me there. And we'll be back um, either the day after day of the game or right after to break down this game against Tampa. Until then, he's Terrence Copper. I'm David Grubb. And this is Believe in Saints brought to you by Bet Online. We'll talk to you soon.